Cars fast women. Wrong show. Today on the show, Tommy and I take a look at L.A. Rush, Nintendo Dogs, Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were Rabbit, and in Versus, it's Genji, Dawn of the Samurai against Ninja Gaiden Black. Some of the games we look at in Reviews on the Run are intended for a mature audience. Please pay attention to each game's ESRB rating. All right, first game we're talking about today is L.A. Rush. This is the update to the famous Rush series from Midway. This is out on the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. Looked at it on the PlayStation 2. What'd you think of L.A. Rush? I think uh, it was a game that, that, that had some potential. There's some fun to be had but it just went, it just fell short on a lot of different areas. The, um, it's like it, trying to compete with every game out there. Well, it, it's, it's like, like it's Grand, part Theft Grand Theft Auto. Auto, it's part Midtown Madness, it's part right. Midnight Club, it's part Need for Speed Underground. It's, just be your own game. Well, it's, it's, like, it's like Grand Theft Auto, except you never can get, get out, out of your the car, car no. basically. Explain to me this, though. The storyline of the game is that you're this big, super millionaire dude. Right. Why do you have to go around the city trying to get like a thousand dollars because here. Lydell takes all your cars you just you skip the story what up with that Lydell he took all your fly whips he that's took them, he took them wrong away. you want your fly whips so you got to go Don't and drive and be get... flying with my whip you got to go earn some bank and I'm then gonna go buy with... all your fly whips back I'm gonna go whip some flies yeah well no what happens is this this big racing promoter gets all jealous because tricks has all the skills and so he wants to buy the, those are Z's. He wants to take his cars. So he takes his cars to screw no, him up. No, his whips, not his, his cars. whips. All right, okay. I'm all getting Jeez. all confused. So he takes his whips, and so now he's got to go win his uh, Nissan 240ZX. Nissan. N or Nissan. But then he also gets these acquire missions where he can actually steal back the cars that he used to have, and, and Lydell sends all of his goons after him, and they're trying to wreck the car. If you bring the car back with a little bit of damage, with, you know, not that much damage, you don't have to pay to have it fixed up again. And here, here's the thing is that, you know, it has some, some good moments in it, like when you actually demolish and crash your car, it steals from burnout, and I, let's say I'll it steals burnout. I hated that so much. Why? That was I, cool. I, well, I hated it because it wasn't as good as burnout, so well, it was trying to be burnout. Oh, uh, yeah, a but... And the traffic... It was better than not having it. No, I hated it because it stopped the action cold, and you couldn't skip it at all. So you every five seconds... Well, you could push the button, and it would go quicker, yeah, though. But you it was so crappy. I got so oh, sick. That was the best part of the game. No, come on. You were crashing every five feet in that damn game because there's so much traffic. Let's label this for what it is. It's, yeah. it's a burnout ripoff. It's trying to be was, a burnout and, gra was and Grand out. Theft Auto. You were bummed out. I was out. bummed out playing this game because, you know, I, I love the Rush games. I love San Francisco Rush. This had nothing to I do know. with any I mean, of those. Forget about all the things that you know about the Rush games. So, okay, that's cool. They're going in a different direction but they copied so many other games. Yeah. You're doing the circuit races and the checkpoint races what? from Midnight Club and, right. and all the stuff that uh, Angel Studios used to do, all right. the Midtown Madness games and all that. Yeah, but you, 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 you can't... None of it was as good as the previous stuff, right. man. It, for somebody looking for a, a racing game that, that's a little different, that's not just driving in circles... Well, you know what? There's already been better racing games than this, so there really is no point at all to spend your money on a game that's not as good as the competition. I, I, I had fun with it a little bit. I mean, I, I agree with all the faults, yep. but at the end of the day, I still found it fun I, to, to race around the city look, I, and have I, that Grand Theft Auto instead of just racing around in a circle. I'm, I'm a fan of the genre. I'm a fan of, of the Rush games. It's just a disappointment, especially because I right. hold Midway and, and the Rush series at such a high regard. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm giving LA Rush 6.5 out of 10. I'm giving it a seven. On the positive side, although Vic didn't like them, I really like the slow-mo crash sequences. The open-ended city of Los Angeles and surrounding areas was cool. And the controls are really simple. On the negative side, I couldn't stand those slow-mo crash sequences. I know it's accurate, but there's just way too much traffic to contend with in this game. But I think the most heinous thing, for me at least, is that this doesn't feel like a rush game at all. 
right, I'm talking about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for the Game Boy Advance. I caught some flack for my nine for the platform version of the game. To that I say, eat me, it's my opinion. Now this game here follows the storyline of the book and the films and all that, but it does it in a side-scrolling platform style game. And you got all the different worlds in there as well, the chocolate room and the inventing room and the television area and the, uh, the juicing room as well. Now, none of this is real 3D. I don't understand this is the Game Boy Advance, so you know, we don't have the, 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 the power of the DS behind this. But I gotta tell you, the graphics for what this is are really, really well done. It was developed by Digital Eclipse, who always does amazing handheld games. You gotta take into account the system it was made for. It was really well done for that system. I'm giving Charlie and the Chocolate Factory an eight out of 10. All right, stick around. After the break, we're gonna be reviewing Nintendogs for the DS. Woof, woof. Tom and I love it when the developers take some risks and try some new kinds of ideas out there, and this definitely qualified. This is the political machine, and this game came out just as the Bush and Kerry campaigns were kicking off into high gear uh, during the last presidential race, and of course we all know how that turned out, but the pol political machine was actually kind of cool because you could choose sort of the Democratic or the Republican side and pick up all kinds of issues and hot topics and kind of try to draw the nation's vote to your side. And you could choose different kinds of characters as well. You weren't stuck with just Kerry and Bush. You could go for Schwarzenegger and Hillary Clinton and all kinds of political figures that we know, all kinds of existing political figures, which was kind of interesting, actually, to see how their different sort of ideas and viewpoints and platforms would carry them up the political ladder. It's not one that you're going to play forever and ever, but if you're looking for sort of a cartoony, simplified kind of access point into the minds and into the world of politicians everywhere, you should go check this out. It's called The Political Machine for your PC. I think it's a buried treasure. All right, we're back. We're doing something we've never done on the show before. We're going to both review a handheld game That's as a right. solo review. We've and done verses before, but never like this. This is Nintendogs for the DS. Obviously, it's a phenomenon that's sweeping the world, and we thought it was a big enough game that both of us should talk about this one. What do you think right. of Nintendogs? Well, this has been my most anticipated games of the year, actually. Yep. And what's strange is you're actually sitting there caring about a, a piece of plastic and, I and know. metal. And because and it's, it's, the interactions are fantastic. They've really got a great art style with the character, with all the little puppies in there. They have, they're so adorable and cute, and they respond to your voice. But the animations they do, like if you teach it how to shake a paw, it'll just put its little puppy paw up there. And you or can do how a, to break dance. Or you I mean, can you teach can your teach puppy you, you know, how to break dance, which lots, there's... progresses what an actual puppy can do. So in fact, Nintendogs <laughs> is better than a real dog. The, the, Take that, Fido. You're really trying to earn money in the game so that you can... Tommy's turned it into a business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got my dogs working, man. They're working like... Well, they're working like dogs. Are they wearing video games live t-shirts in the game? They should be. Yes, I, I, all right. create one of those. They're promoting ones. his concert series. <laughs> That's what they're doing. It's amazing. Just he, like me. Yeah. But the big thing is bark mode. Right. And bark mode is where you put your dog in bark mode and you go out and you meet other people in, in the vicinity who have bark, and your two dogs meet up. I'm in bark mode right now. You are in bark mode? Woof, yeah. woof. Yeah. But the, uh... <laughs> but one of the things that bothered me about bark mode is this, is that you can only ever hook up with one other person. Right. I thought if there was gonna be a group of 10 I people, know. we could all hook up. But I'll tell you the biggest problem in the game. Yeah. You can only take your dog on walks once every half hour, and you can only enter competitions. You can enter any three in a 24-hour period. So what happens is that, okay, you've cleaned your dog once, you play with your dog a little bit, you take them for a walk, you do the competitions, then literally, there's nothing else you, to do you until that half the dog hour is, and, and that gets boring. It really does. See, the great... They've artificially lengthened the amount of time you're going to be playing the game. I mean, because you could burn through a lot of the stuff that you can do in Nintendo Dogs in a couple of days. Right. You know, and, and, and the that dog... sucks because I wanted to keep playing the game, and I'm like, you know what? And, and the can... dog has a personality, too, let's face it. And sometimes you want to play with a dog, but the dog doesn't want to play with you. And that's infuriating. When you're yelling at your DS, everybody on the street staring at you thinking you're a freak, 
and your dog's not paying attention, it's like it's kicking up its hind legs and rubbing its ass right, in yeah. your face like that. So I think this is a pretty remarkable piece of software. I still can't quite consider it a video game per se I as know I know why. them. But it's a fun DS diversion. I've definitely been it's digging. More of a video game than that Kirby crap you like playing. Give me a break. I love that Kirby crap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm giving uh, Nintendogs a 9 out of 10. It's a great game. I'm giving it a 9.5. On the positive side, this game really makes you care for an inanimate object. It uses all the functionality of the DS to its highest capability, and you can even go into bark mode and hook up with a bunch of new people. On the negative side, speaking of bark mode, we wish we could hook up with more than one puppy at a time. We wish there were more mini games and other things to do with your dog after the competitions were over. And be prepared to get some strange looks when you're telling your DS, who's a good doggy? Who's a good boy? Sit, sit. All right, stick around. We've got more dogs coming up after the break. Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the Were-Rabbit after this. Hey, we're talking about Ghost in the Shell standalone complex for the PSP. This is different from the PlayStation 2 Ghost in the Shell game that Tommy and I reviewed a little while ago. This one's more of a first-person shooter, although it has some pretty interesting idiosyncrasies that sort of separate it from games like Code in Arms. Yeah, it's the standard running through corridors and rooms and blasting at bad guys, but you've got different characters that you can choose from, each with their own abilities. And of course, the characters in Ghost in the Shell, some of them are kind of cyborg type creations with all kinds of cyber psychological weird stuff going on. Now, once you get into the actual gameplay, it's a little bit tricky to get the controls down. You know, you need that dual analog thumbstick thing, but of course, this doesn't have that, so you've got to use the buttons to kind of position your thing. So get prepared to shoot at the floor and then the ceiling and then the walls, but then you'll finally target and hit the bad guy. I'm giving Ghost in the Shell standalone complex for the PSP 7.5 out of 10. All right, we're back. We're talking about a brand new action adventure game from Konami and, and developed by Frontier. This is called Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbits, based on the new Wallace and Gromit movie. So it's good to see these characters sort of come to life in a game, and I think they've done a really good job creating that claymation. Creature sort of... comforts. Cre that was his best work. Oh, yes? You see creature comforts? No, I never have. They should do a game on that. They probably will. Yeah, and what this game is, is it's, it reminded me a lot of Luigi's Mansion, uh -huh. the first game out for the GameCube. There's a little hurdy-gurdy in there, too. A little hurdy-gurdy. Yeah. But uh, so basically, you have this thing that sucks stuff. It's the bun gun. You pick up a soccer ball or a mushroom, right. and you just shoot them right in the head, and they react. Very handy device. You can actually open doors with it. It's a puzzle-solving element in the game, and that's what's cool about these guys is Wallace and Gromit always have all of these awesome gadgets. So not only do you have the bun gun, but you get this bunny hopper thing that allows you to bounce around. You get this umbrella device that allows you to float. You can create this lady uh, wear rabbit decoy thing to, to attract the wear rabbits to the thing. It's, that, it's pretty solid. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, there's lots of different mini missions. I mean, it's a huge city in a huge yeah, world. It's kind of got a Grand Theft Auto vibe in terms of the, uh, op, you know, the openness of it. Yeah, right? open city environment. But kinda. one of the problems I, I had, the city is so big. You do get lost. That you get lost, and that's what pissed me the off. The other thing, too, is there's lots of camera quirks with this thing as well. I mean, you, if one of the cool sort of things that you can do as Gromit the dog is you can actually jump up walls right. and do these wall jump, you know, back and forth and sort of scale things. But if the camera is moving on you as you're trying to do that, it's so frustrating. And then you'll, get, you'll finally work it out, and you'll get to the top of a ledge, and then the camera will adjust, and you'll walk off the ledge again. Right. It drove me insane. It was totally crazy. I tell you, a lot of the game is based around the whole greenhouse thing. You have, you have a greenhouse, yeah. and you're supposed to be you know, growing certain plants and things like that. Who thought this was fun? You know, I thought it was very fun, and I, I'm looking forward to the film. I haven't seen the movie yet, but uh, I think fans of Wallace and Gromit are going to be very surprised. I think this mm -hmm. was a good effort it was a good from game. Frontier. Yep. These are the guys that brought us Dog's Life, too. So, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, they're very talented out there. So definitely, if you're fans of this game or this genre, you should go check it out. It's called Wallace and Gromit's Curse of the Were-Rabbit. I'm going to give it a 7.5. I'm giving it a 7. On the positive side, the game has a very quirky and fun sense of humor. The graphics and cutscenes are very true to the source. 
And there's a good diversity in the kinds of things you can do and the kinds of gadgets you get to use in the different missions. On the negative side, there are some camera problems in certain areas. And the whole greenhouse aspect of this game didn't hold my attention for very long. All right, today in hardware, we're talking about another PlayStation 2 wireless controller. This is called the Predator S-Type. It's from our good friends at Pelican. And uh, this is a solid designed wireless controller. They're really getting this down, this 2.4 gigahertz thing with the rumble, the long battery life. And wireless. And it's wireless, and it's got a pearlescent kind of shading to it. And it's kind of, I think, marketed to all of the Need for Speed Underground guys that want to color and paint their cars and all that stuff. This is the controller you're supposed to use for those games. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I, I really like this controller uh, because it feels a lot like the PlayStation 2 controller I thought it was. as far as in your hand. I thought it, right? I forgot that I was using a yeah, wireless controller, I mean, which is, is the best thing you can say about it. You know, like the Wave Bird is to the GameCube, yeah. this controller almost is to the PlayStation 2. But the only thing that I didn't like about this thing was the uh, it has a kind of a cheap plastic sort of st stuck on. Like the D-pad? Yeah, the D-pad just felt really flimsy and not responsive at all. But some of them are metallic silver. It's, uh, it's 30 bucks US, which I think is a very reasonable price for a it's wireless for controller. For a wireless controller with yep. rumble, that, that's a great design. I'm liking it. Yep, solid, solidly built Pelican controller. I'm definitely recommending it. Me too. Love the colors, love the chrome. On the positive side, the pearlescent finish on all these controllers is awesome. Not only is it wireless, but it also has the rumble pack in there as well. And for all that stuff, a $30 price point is pretty good. On the negative side, we pretty much really dug this controller. The only thing we didn't like that much was the cheap D-pad thing it has on there. Stick around, we're coming right back with Versus. It's Ninja Gaiden Black against Genji, Dawn of the Samurai. A Ninja Guy in Black? A Ninja Guy in Black against Genji, Dawn of the Samurai. Welcome to the Hit List. Here are five of our favorite games where you can play as a dog. Number one is Dog's Life. Number two, Parappa the Rapper. Number three, Jet Force Gemini. Number four, MDK2. And number five, Dead to Rights. All right, today in Versus, we have the classic Ninjas versus Samurai battle. It's Ninja Gaiden Black for the Xbox against Genji Dawn of the Samurai for the PlayStation 2. Let's talk about graphics first. How did the Samurai Ninja Battle fair in the visuals department? Well, you know, you got the PlayStation 2 versus the Xbox. Right. So obviously, Ninja Gaiden on the Xbox is going to look a little cleaner and a little sharper. Yep. But I got to tell you that I was really impressed. It had lots of nice foliage, and it had some foliage. great... Foliage. It had some great effects, you know, the when you did some moves and some lights, and I like when the screen went kind of black and white and did all that stuff. So yeah, the well, cinematics have, were good. They have like a bullet time thing going on in uh, Dawn of the Samurai. So you know, all of a sudden everything will slow down. And you can pull off some pretty cool looking combo maneuvers. You can actually see where all the blade swipes and stuff are coming. But you know, the thing you are bringing up a good point there, comparing the Xbox to the PlayStation 2. But the deal is, Ninja Gaiden Black is really just an update of a of an early 2004 game. Way back in 2004. But it was at the beginning of last year, and this is oh. at the tail end of this year. Ninja Gaiden Black is kick-ass even, you know, a year and a half later. Graphically, Ninja Gaiden has to win. Absolutely. Genji looks great, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look that much better than what we've seen in Onimusha or something like that. So I, I'm giving this thing to uh, Ninja Gaiden Black. Graphics as well. All right, okay, now what about in the audio department? Well, in, in this one, you know, this Ganji game really does it excellent because of all the live, authentic instruments. And likewise, all of the voiceovers are very Japanese. authentic sounding. Yeah. The audio and the story of Genji, it all sort of fits in, because Genji is actually uh, a, a very ancient Japanese novel. That's what the whole game is all based on. Although Ninja Gaiden Black is no slouch either. And now, the dragon sword is gripped firmly in the hands of young ninja Ryu Hayabusa. But for, uh, for the audio, I got to give it to uh, Jumanji. I agree with you that Genji sounds authentic and cool but I just like the diversity and depth of audio in Ninja Gaiden Black. All right, now, what about gameplay? How do these two compare? Um, you know, for me, I the uh, the Jumanji game 
has, um, you know, a lot more action type stuff, which, you know, I'm more into the sword slashing and this and that, whereas Ninja Gaidam is more of the stealth thing, is more of figuring out certain things. It's an adventure game mixed with some kick-ass fighting. Right, whereas Genji is more of just kick-ass fighting, pretty right. much. With, you know, you can, there's a few upgrade thing and you stuff to collect stupid things like I, herbs. I, I thought like Genji. Herb or whatever his name is. Uh, I thought Genji played just like Onomusha. I mean, it's made by yeah. guys that worked on Onomusha. Yeah. They went off and started their oh, own studio. Oh, I, I completely I, I didn't feel that it was that far removed. I mean, yes, there's a sense of elegance and style to the whole thing there. I thought that it was a beautiful game to, to look at and and play, but you're still dealing with static camera angles and walking out of frame and loading in between different scenes. The thing about Ninja Gaiden, that it, it's still a difficult game to play, and they've actually given you a bunch of different difficulty settings. There's an easy version, right. which is great for people that don't want to play difficult games at all. It's a very ambitious game, and I think it can be a little bit overwhelming for gamers, and I think that's what happened the first time around. That's why Tecmo wanted to go back to this, because I, I personally feel, I know a lot of other gamers feel, that this is a classic. So gameplay wise for me, there's no question. Ninja Gaiden Black takes the cake. I, I give him a tie. Give him a tie. Yeah. All, all right, so overall then, which one did you like better? Overall, I, I think that Ninja Gaiden is a more in-depth experience. I'm sick of that one less. All so, right, so you're giving uh, it to Ninja Gaiden? Yeah, Ninja Gaiden for me gets the, the, the nod. I think Ninja Gaiden is the ultimate ninja game. I think it's the best one we've seen so far. So to, to I would agree with extrapolate that. on that and to build a better version of that is fantastic. Whereas the Samurai game, it's just another one in an oversaturated genre. So definitely Ninja Gaiden Black gets my vote. I'm going to give Ninja Gaiden Black 9.5 out of 10. I'm giving it an 8. And what about uh, Genji, Dawn of the Samurai? Ganji gets a 7.5. 6.5 from me. So there you have it in this battle between ninjas and samurais. The ninjas come out on top. We're giving Ninja Gaiden Black the win. Today on the show, Tommy and I took a look at L.A. Rush. It's pretty cool that the game offers a huge city to explore with lots of variety in the missions, but this doesn't feel like it's part of the Rush series at all. Nintendogs. This is an incredible concept with lots of very fun and fresh gameplay. Just be prepared to be made fun of when you're talking to your DS in public. Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit. There's some pretty clever humor and puzzles in this game, but there's also some flaky cameras to contend with. In Versus, it was Genji Dawn of the Samurai, which is a great-looking samurai game, very much in the vein of the Onimusha series, against Ninja Gaiden Black. This is simply the best ninja game ever created, and I think it's one of the best Xbox games you can buy. No contest. The winner this time is Ninja Gaiden Black. See, that's what weight loss can do for you. It's awesome. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Just stop that. I know you want to that. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs>